Hi there, Nate Urandi, Orion Training Systems. I'm going to do something a little different today, cover uh, a few topics in short instead of one uh, in more depth. Did this ever happen to you guys in Zwift? Um, I was in a group ride today, more of a, a race, and it was going really well in terms of uh, being a great dynamic effort. A couple laps around uh, London, and with about 15 minutes left or so, all of a sudden Zwift just quit on me. Just kicked me out of the app and my iPad shut down. Frustrating. <laughs> it took the wind out of my sails. I got back in there a couple minutes later and just, you know, finished the ride out by myself, just cruising along. But uh, that was pretty frustrating. In any case, uh, to the task at hand, 60 minutes. I'm sure you guys uh, watched the uh, segment on mechanical doping and it was probably eye opening to some. Um, but to me, it was disappointing in its sensationalism. There was really no meat on the bone of that report whatsoever. And the only new takeaway that I had was that uh, there were an identified 12 riders in the 2015 Tour de France that uh, had been caught uh, using mechanical doping. So that's kind of interesting, though. Why 12? Was it really 12? That seems pretty definitive. So who were they? What teams were they on? Why weren't they sanctioned? And so on. Um, why wouldn't they happily come out with that information? You know, it also led me to believe that I have zero doubts that any of the riders who have been called into question about were they using mechanical doping or not, absolutely were. When you see explosive seated attacks that spike watts, yet there is no uh, uh, subsequent uh, increase in heart rate, that makes zero sense. You know, lastly, the 60 minutes thing, it smacks of publicity, uh, smacks of a stunt um, in an attempt to maximize money, monetary gain, rather than actually freely sharing information that, quite frankly, uh, could help rectify a sport that has a very tarnished reputation. It's not the only one, but cycling is certainly the anti-doping whipping boy. You know, all right, second topic. More athletes are getting caught via out-of-competition drug testing. The latest is pro uh, triathlete Beth Gertis. Um, she was caught with Osterine in her system, and Osterine is a muscle-building SARM. And just so I get it right, SARM stands for Selective androgen receptor modulator. What that means is it is known to increase muscle mass and certainly enhance physical performance. Now, Beth contends that it was in some sort of tainted supplement, um, and it's the same old story. I'm innocent. Here's the laundry list of reasons why I'm innocent. I've never failed a drug test. I'm part of the out-of-competition, you know, testing pool. Um, you know, never had a TUE, blah, blah, blah. And so what's interesting, though, is that after exhaustive detective work, um, she can't figure out how it got into her system. She can't identify the supplement she took. She can't identify where it might have come from. It, she's baffled. So if that's the case, then it's simply a story of the same bullshit on a different day. So I'm not buying it. And if she is, in fact, innocent, then it's incumbent upon her to understand what she is taking that's tainted and make sure she erases that, eradicates that from her daily routine. Lastly, some perspective on doping in sports in general. Regardless of what country you're from, what athletes you support, what teams you may support, in the case of a team sport, um, you got to look at the facts. If you think your favorite athlete or your favorite team is clean, yet those athletes or those teams are beating known dopers, think twice about the cleanliness of the athletes or teams you're supporting. All things being equal, clean athletes will not beat doped athletes. When you're at the tip of the pyramid in terms of athletic performance, a clean athlete will not beat a doped athlete. End of story. So that should raise a red flag to you. Secondly, 
if there's been a more meteoric rise in Olympic or world championship um, medals, medal counts, doesn't have to be gold medals, just medal counts by any given country, that's a red flag, especially when those countries outpace known doping countries and their medal counts. Total red flag. So with that, I'll leave it to you. Leave your comments below. Um, good, bad, or ugly. And as always, happy training.